Attorney Michael Avenatti is now facing federal charges in both New York and in California for totally separate cases. My head is officially going to explode. <laughs> I, I, I don't understand what this is about. Charges he's facing extortion, bank fraud, wire fraud. Avenatti's conduct had nothing to do with zealous advocacy for a client or any other kind of legitimate legal work. Instead, Avenatti used illegal and extortionate threats for the purpose of obtaining, of obtaining millions of dollars in payments for himself. Avenatti repeatedly pressured the company to agree to pay or risk having Avenatti hold a press conference that he claimed would dramatically drive down the stock price of the company and its market value. As Avenatti threatened in one recorded meeting, if the company did not meet his demands, the company might die. But if not, it was, quote, going to be inflicted with cut after cut after cut after cut. As alleged, the entire scheme played out in less than a week. Avenatti first met with representatives of the company last Tuesday, March 19, in Manhattan. At that meeting, Avenatti said he represented a client who coached an amateur high school basketball team sponsored by the company, which is Nike. The team had recently lost that contract worth $72,000 a year, and Avenatti claimed the coach had information about potential misconduct by employees at Nike. The allegations of misconduct were similar in kind to those that formed the core of a prior criminal prosecution brought by our office that payments were made to families of high school basketball players. In that meeting, and in subsequent conversations that were recorded as part of our investigation, Avenatti threatened to hold a press conference at which he would make these allegations public if the company did not agree to his financial demands. Avenatti promised to forego the press conference and allow the company to avoid financial harm if the company agreed to pay his client $1.5 million and for Avenatti himself to retain Avenatti and another co-conspirator to conduct a multi-million dollar internal investigation, an internal investigation that the company did not request. Avenatti made clear that he was approaching the company at a time intended to maximize the potential financial damage of such a press conference, namely on the eve of the annual NCAA tournament and the company's quarterly earnings call. As Avenatti threatened on one call recorded during the investigation, if the company did not accede to his financial demands and in his words, quote, I'll go take $10 billion off your client's market cap. In a recorded meeting the next day with representatives of the company, Avenatti made clear that he expected to be paid up to $25 million, with $12 million to be paid up front and deemed earned when paid. And when asked by a lawyer for the company why the company would agree to such an arrangement, Avenatti responded in substance that he had the company in a very vulnerable position where he could wipe out 5 to $6 billion of its market capital. When the company's lawyers resisted paying Avenatti to conduct an internal investigation, Avenatti told the company it could skip paying for an internal investigation if instead it simply paid him $22.5 million. Then Avenatti said he would, quote, ride off into the sunset. Pressure and a sense of urgency were used in delivering these threats. As you can see from the timeline, this all happened in a period of three days. Let's listen in to prosecutors in California just moments ago. In December 2017, Mr. Avenatti negotiated a settlement for a client that involved, involved in an intellectual property dispute. Under the settlement, $1.6 million was due to be paid by January 10, 2018. At a meeting in his law office in Newport Beach, Mr. Avenatti gave the client a bogus settlement agreement that instead listed a later date, March 10, 2018, as the date by which the payment was due. The $1.6 million was wired on January 5th to an account controlled by Mr. Avenatti. 
Mr. Avenatti then used his client's money to pay expenses for his own coffee business, Global Baristas LLC, which did business as Tully's Coffee, as well as to pay his own personal expenses. When the fake March 10 deadline came and went, the client asked Mr. Avenatti where his settlement money was. Mr. Avenatti never told him the money had arrived. And to add insult to injury, between April and November of 2018, Mr. Avenatti, quote unquote, advanced $130,000 to his client so the client could meet his own financial obligations while he waited for the supposedly late settlement money to arrive. In essence, it appears Mr. Avenatti loaned the client's own money to the client, money that Mr. Avenatti had already secretly collected. To, to this day, nearly 15 months later, Mr. Avenatti's client is still waiting for the bulk of his settlement. 